and pulling again on this theme of the four pilots as we see the two mission specialists also pilots do their rocket recline I was struck by what Ann McLean, McLean said in a press conference when she said you know as pilots as she ascends the stairs along with Nicole Ayers that we were just talking about they like to do the pre-flight check, right? Check out the aircraft, look at all the compartments, check the log books, maintenance books. But they rely on a very large team to do that when you go to space because as pilots, they can't do that in this situation. They have to rely on the men and women of NASA and SpaceX to get this equipment ready to go. Yeah, and that's one of the things that for us as astronauts is so important, and it makes these roles that we have on the ground even more meaningful. You know, we talked about talks experience as a flight director. We talked about all the various different ground positions that we serve as astronauts, and all of those things are so valuable, mostly because you get to know the people that are working on every system and every aspect of your mission, and we develop this camaraderie and this trust in those people. And that is, I think, you know, the number one thing that puts your mind at ease. You know, people always ask us as astronauts, are you afraid? You know, what are you thinking in those moments? And really the answer is we're not afraid because we rely on this incredible training that we have and all of these people on the ground. We know that safety is their number one priority and we trust them implicitly because, as you mentioned, we can't. We don't Court, have the countdown. knowledge. Crew is at the right room on schedule. We don't really have you know, the time or the know-how to, to inspect all these things ourselves. And so we do 100% rely on the NASA and the SpaceX teams. And, and we see some of those team members, the more visible ones there on your screen as the mission specialists come out of the elevators and make their way up the stairs. We just saw Commander Ann McLean and pilot Nicole Ayers getting into the White Room right on time. And now mission specialists uh, Takuya Onishi and Kirill Peskov will make their way up to the top of the launch tower. And as you were talking, I was reminded that uh, you have an interesting story about a couple of the astronauts regarding uh, being up this high. <laughs> I do. You know, maybe we don't need to mention any names, but there are actually astronauts in our office that have quite a, quite a strong fear of heights. May or may not be 75% of this crew, actually, right now. <laughs> Something, again, that they really share in common and find strength in together. Now, once you're in the spacecraft and uh, it's articulated into a flight position, they won't have to worry about feeling that. Yeah, it's interesting because they are all pilots, so they're certainly well accustomed to it, for sure. And I think that's one of the things that our training does for us. It, it allows us to just be operators and overcome any of those pre-existing fears. Okay, Anne and Nicole are getting ready to ingress to the spacecraft. And there goes oh, Anne. Countdown. Ingress start. Making sure not to bump the door, which has a very important seal around it that keeps their environment on the inside and space on the outside. Yeah, absolutely. Even just one small hair, you know, you can see that's why everybody is so carefully, everything's contained with their hair, their face and everything, and not just for the quarantine, but also just that white clean room, white room environment to make sure that nothing gets in the way that could break that seal. Here come Kirill and Takuya. Big waves, pumping fists, are ready to go. Into the white room they go, where they will sign that NASA meatball that you see on the side. Yeah, there it is, another one of the traditions. While we're in this moment, we want to take a social question now. If you have a question, please uh, jump on to our social platforms. Use the hashtag AskNASA. Send us a question. Jessica will be doing the answering. She's the expert, and we have our first question now. JVO9000 asks, how do astronauts deal with stress or anxiety prior, during, and possibly post-launch? Well, that's a pertinent question. I think it really goes to what we were just talking about. 
because we have this incredible training and this network of personnel that we rely on, we don't really feel that kind of fear or stress so much because we have so much of these, this real like muscle memory just kind of baked in there. And I think that helps you operate above any latent stress or anxiety. I mean, of course we're humans. Of course we have all the same emotions as everybody else. But when you have that really extensive training and this trust in the hardware and trust in the ground teams, it allows you to be an effective operator and operate beyond that. You know, I was actually talking about this with Anne's mother just today. For us, the launch process is really not that stressful. It's really much harder, much more difficult for the loved ones and the families on the ground because they don't have that same level of training. They don't know exactly what to expect the whole way. They don't necessarily have that trust in the hardware like we do. So they're the ones that I think this day is so stressful for, not necessarily us as astronauts. How about that? I've heard other astronauts say that all of that training, just like you mentioned, it, it, it is muscle memory. They have done it so many times that it feels like on launch day, just part of the training. Yeah, and it was certainly like that for me on my launch. You know, people always ask, like, what you felt like. And we had been through that entire sequence so many times in the really high-fidelity simulators that we trained in in Russia that I almost had to remind myself that the end of the day was going to be different. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually not going to go home to the cottage for dinner. I would <laughs> I would be in space at the yeah. end, you know, only after about eight minutes. And then you hear things. You know, you feel the rocket move a little bit. You hear a groan from the fuel system. And those are the things that are like, Aha. wait a minute. This is, <laughs> this is a little bit different. We've got another social question. This one directly to you, Jessica, about your experience. What was your favorite place on Earth to see, presumably when you were up at the International Space Station? Yeah, that's a tough one to pick just one because this vantage point that we have is so unique and special. I think some of the things that I wasn't really aware of were, for example, all of the different colors and textures of the dunes. So if you look in, in Africa or in the Middle East especially, all these different colors and textures and crazy and in, intricate shapes that I was really not that prepared for you know it's if you zoom in with a 400 millimeter lens it's like a modern art it's like you're going to wow. a modern art museum and yeah. capturing all of these images it is a, a really it's really just a jaw dropping yeah. i really also liked seeing all the currents the way the water swirls especially in the coastal regions the different color swaths that you see the coral glaciers reefs. coral reefs yeah, yeah around um i had been diving in the great barrier reef a few years before my mission so it was really cool to see the reefs um off of australia the patagonia ice fields another favorite spot of mine the where where these like glacial tongues kind of come down and you see these high altitude turquoise lakes and it reminds you how beautiful the planet is and there are so many places that I know now that I need to explore that I you know weren't even necessarily on my list before my mission and you saw Antarctica a place where you did a lot of research yeah given the latitude given the inclination of the space station we don't get an incredible view of the Antarctic unfortunately I wish that we did but you know you can see the see southern ocean and a little bit in the distance Now we've got uh, the crew all in their seats inside Dragon Endurance. Yeah, they're clipping into those five-point harnesses, making sure that everything is secure. And you can see they're getting some help from the SpaceX team just to make sure that everything is lined up correctly. They're going to be comfortable. They're going to be safe in that environment as they're waiting for launch. softer. 